Thursday, February 15th, 2007, and we're blowing wow. Bill away here in the paint here on CBS Sportsline, exclusively on CBS Sportsline. Bill Raft around Jason Horowitz and Bill. Yeah, sorry for blowing you away there, yeah, by the way. Overpowering but, uh, early here, a lot of energy. <laughs> Middle of February, what is going through the mind of coaches and players Oof. as we head towards the, long, the home stretch here? You know, it depends where you are, particularly in your conference. And uh, coaches that have had a couple of tough years now, the concern is, do we get to New York, for example, with the Big East or... Do we do well in the tournament so we get an opportunity to be in the NCAA or the NIT? So that's part of it. I think it impacts on everybody, officials, players. Everybody gets a little tighter. If you want to get a buy from the, in the first round, that's one aspect. So there's so many things that are involved here. It's not an easy couple of weeks, I assure you. You know what else affects people? If we talk about them here on the show, they do well the following week. Wow, Last week well, we that's... talked about Duke and Texas Tech. Duke comes out, wins at BC on Wednesday night. Texas Tech winning at exactly. Texas A&M this week. So it's a good omen if we talk about well, it. I'm, I'm sure they pay attention to it. Of course. Of it had nothing to do with Knight Krzyzewski and the players. Nothing. Okay. Only about you. All right, let's get into it. You talked about New York and the Big East. Let's talk to you about a team that's uh, done very well the last couple of years in that mm-hmm. conference, that being John Beeline's West Virginia team. And he's done a lot with a team that lost a lot of guys from last year's team. You know, you see there he lost five seniors, his leading scorers, Pitts Noggle, Gansey, uh, Joe Araber, his sixth man, Patrick Beeline. But this is a team that that's a little inconsistent at times this year. You go out and beat UCLA over the weekend and then come out and pitch a zero against Georgetown. Well, John Beeline is pit-snoggling people this year. <laughs> I mean, all these new faces, and it's not an easy system to learn, uh, Jason. He understands uh, spacing is a big issue. They'll bite you with an open floor opportunity. But guys have stepped up. Joe Alexander's athletic. Frank Young has made outside side shots. Smulligan sort of replaces Pitts now, he can step out and make shots. Nichols in the backcourt has found people. Ruoff is, as you see him here at the rim, and then the follow, a terrific outside shooter. Now, to answer you, what is the difficulty? I think they're so hard to prepare for frequently, it throws people off. I mean, they'll have difficulty. But in the conference, they're used to it. They've seen it many times. You cases. mean the teams facing them in yes. conference? Yeah. The, the next time you play them, I'm thinking UCLA coming in, you're not... It's almost like that single wing in the old days or uh, <laughs> wishbone. You only have a week to prepare in football for it. You don't play it the rest of the year. That's what that 1-3-1 zone gives them people problems with. And also how far they take your big people away from the rim. And they're not comfortable challenging these big guys who can knock down threes. The last two years, West Virginia two years ago in the Elite Eight. Last year in the Sweet 16, uh, this young team, may it's going to have to rely on the three in the NCAA tournament to get that far again. All right, another team. Uh, let's get into one. You, you've gotten used to seeing the tournament the last couple of years, but this season, it's, you know, Nevada is a very quiet number 11 team in the country, 23-2. and two. They have a tremendous complement of players to Nick Vizikas, Marcellus Kemp, uh, Ramon Sessions. They have a win against Gonzaga, but really, they haven't beaten anybody else. Your take on Nevada. Well, you're, you're very tough on it. I mean, you play your schedule. I mean, whoever is on it, uh, you know, this is an outstanding basketball team. You don't. They're one of those teams that they don't have to play anybody in a bracket buster to uh, get gain respect or get a position in the ranking, but it's a very good basketball team, and I think what makes them go is Fasikas really understands how to play. Uh, he can take hits. He can go outside. Uh, he's physical. Physical, and he's a great rebounder. He's a double-double yeah. guy. I mean, you don't have that uh, with, with one individual. Uh, but they've got big people that have impressed. You mentioned Sessions, of course, uh, the ability to be unselfish, to take hits. This is a good team. Very and, and good I, team. You know, you, you in some ways, and I think you said this off-air to me, it, it gives you a little thought of Gonzaga. And, you know, quite frankly, they are like that. I mean, they're not going to be an easy out for people who are used to having a little nice run early in the NCAA. Yeah, and I think part of that reason is they have, as you mentioned, the outside with physique, or the inside outside with physiques, but they also have other guys, the wingmen, and they have the guy that distribute the ball. Right. They have all the compliments around their best player. But, you know, they could run into a tough team. For instance, like Northern Iowa, who you mentioned, Bracket Buster, they play this weekend. As we get into our quick hits here, let's talk about teams that have the most to gain from this weekend. Start with Northern Iowa, just 7-9 in the Missouri Valley. But a win at Nevada would be very impressive. Well, they, they're very good at home. McLeod Center, 7,000 seat arena. It's Ben Jacobson takes over. Brooks McGowan has been there for four years as the point guard distributing this basketball. And that conference is such a difficult one. I mean, that win would hold them in high regard. And then, of course, playing well coming down the stretch. But it will be interesting to see this year if they get three or four. And I think it all depends on what goes on the next two weeks. Last year they got four as of Thursday. Northern Iowa sixth mm-hmm. in the Missouri Bradley's Valley. Bradley's fourth. Bradley is yeah. fourth. In Southern Illinois, Illinois is, is playing great Southern basketball. Southern Illinois one, Creighton, Creighton two, and then right. uh, Missouri State three. It's a wild conference. Right 
It's a great conference, it but is. you have to at least finish 500. So Northern Iowa would have to win out to get to that point in the conference. All right, how about a team that, well, 10-2 and two right now in the MAC, and, and, and that being Akron, tied with Toledo as far as, the, you know, it's two divisions, but tied uh, as far as the best record in the MAC. But Akron, 19-5, and five, and another team that has a lot to gain this weekend because if they can win against Austin P. Now, Austin P is not a team with a big name, but leading its conference, if Akron can win, can they be a team that if they don't win the MAC tournament, get into the NCAA tournament. Uh, you know, in, in these scenarios, I mean, that's what <laughs> makes you successful. Uh, it, it, it's wild. I think Kent State, we had them in a tournament. Peep, this is an underrated, they didn't get the publicity of the Missouri Valley. This is one tough conference, and I mentioned Kent State because they're second in that division. Uh, but I think it's all going to boil down to tournament, and I honestly think only one will get in, which is sort of a shame because I think they are worthy of two. And there's a couple of years ago, too, where Buffalo should have gotten in yeah. and did not get in. It's the same situation this year. Uh, Toledo, on the other hand, folks, the other leader of the other side of the conference, not going to get in without mm -hmm. winning the conference tournament. They had an awful non-conference record. All right, our last quick hit. You're going to be on the committee before this one is One of these over. days. We got to get me an AP vote and a committee, uh, a committee, a chair of the committee. I think AP is easier. Easier? Well, you work on that. Let's get into our last quick kick here, and that uh, being Virginia Commonwealth. Now, leading the Colonial Athletic, lost at Old Dominion this past weekend. A team that then also beat Hoster this week, but VCU. You mentioned Bradley earlier. These two teams meet in this bracket buster weekend. If VCU does not win the Colonial, can they be a team to get in? What do I know? I don't yeah. know. Apparently, I'm on the committee. What I, do you I, know? I, I, I love this team, though, because it's a three-guard look, much like Hofstra. I think this conference, there are so many good teams, and, uh, you know, coming into the tournament, do they get two? I think the scenario is if Drexel doesn't win, they'll get two. That's my guess. You think Drexel's the only team that can get in? As I, I do from their power rating. So I, I think the tournament's going to dictate. Everybody's praying, I'm sure. The conference <laughs> commissioner's hoping that they do get two. They'll be begging for three, as they should. But it's very competitive, and, you know, Grant's done a great job with this three guard look. They were a very good basketball team. Average 12, 14, and 12 at the guard spot. So they remind you a lot of Hofstra. Yeah, and in case you're not familiar Maynard with the Colonial. Yep, company. They yeah. do. With a Hofstra Walker, with the three guard look right. as well. And in case you're not familiar with the Colonial Law, that's the conference that produces George Mason, who obviously went to the Final Four. Who's going to be season. the George Mason? This uh, that's, year. That's, that's, that's what you're <laughs> supposed to do. All right, let's get into our players of the week, Bill. And you're off to Arizona this week, so let's talk about the, one of those guys. Well, Chase Bunninger is an outstanding performer. Had a breakout game against Oregon over the last seven days. A very talented guy. Great with out the basketball, shoots the ball, uh, he gets his hands on it, he's unselfish, he can post up, he really is a comer. People will enjoy watching him perform. And, and one of the things you mentioned to me beforehand is that he moves so well without the ball. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. One of the best in the move. Uh, well, my player of the week is another game that's on CBS this week, and that's being Vanderbilt, Florida, and I'm going to go with Derek Byers. They played well when they went to Florida, had a lead, and then couldn't hang on, they had a bad mm -hmm. second half. This time the Gators come to Vanderbilt undefeated. I'm going to take Derek Byers. Now, I'm not saying Vanderbilt's going to win the game, because that it was a very tough task. I think he's going to have a tremendous game, and if he does, gives him a shot. What a home court advantage, too. And yeah. I, I think Billy Donovan knows that if, they, if there's any building that can help you, it's that one. Yeah. In, out, I like Vanderbilt. They should be in the tournament. All right, Bill. Pleasure. That's how we do it. Great always, day. Always it. pleasure. Folks, we're always on demand on CBS Sportsline and on YouTube. For Bill Raftery, I'm Jason Horowitz. That's this edition of In the Paint. Until next time, take care.